everybody. Yeah, we better, better get started here. Let's start by turning to number 544, and we'll sing uh, My Face Still Holds Thee one time. Let's stand. sing the first and third and fifth verses, one, three, and five. to uh, acknowledge in a little bit, but first we have some announcements. Uh, we want to focus on graduates today, but we also have to focus on the, the people that teach them. So uh, some of you may not be aware, I wasn't aware until just a while ago, but we have a special teacher in our midst today. We have a Logan County Teacher of the Year. teachers, our retired teachers, our past teachers, uh, for all their efforts they put in uh, every day, especially remember my days of grade school and junior high and high school, uh, I was, uh, I wasn't a bad kid, but I was a little mischievous as I knew, so, uh, thank you for putting up with, with us and, and like folks like me. Uh, other announcements we have, uh, let's talk about DBS. We still are in need of two group leaders. Now, when you volunteer to be a group leader, you say, hey, what might I be getting myself into? Well, you do not actually have to bring a lesson. You just have to lead a group, uh, lead your tribe from place to place, and make sure they're not straying away and you getting out of hand and those kind of things. So we still need two group leaders. 
we also need some, uh, let's see, I think we still need a helper for registration. There's two days we need kitchen help. Uh, seems like there's one more, one more. Oh, high dive. We probably a hippie from the 60s or 70s or whatever that. Nope, none of those. Well, we're going to be uh, high diving some t shirts in DBS this year, and I think they do they eventually go in the shoe boxes? So there, it's, a, it's a dual purpose position, very important position. Somebody to help these kids high dive t shirts. So, uh, four, four, four things we need, though. Uh, four people, positions we need. Because we also need some things. I don't know if you still have the list from last week. I mentioned that uh, the only thing I can think of off the top of my head is a palm tree. Uh, but there's six or seven things we needed uh, to finish decorating and be able to point to. Uh, if you have those available, uh, talk to Barb or get them down here. Make sure you put your name on them. Let's see here. Um, so these uh, t shirts, by the way. Card that's in the shoe box up here. But it says, uh, for instance, one pack of thin fruit of the loom, very specific fruit of the loom, white, size 4T, 5T. Uh, t shirts are in aisle E24 at your local Walmart. <laughs> and they cost uh, for one pack $14.98. So that is one, for instance, card out of the shoe box. Dual purpose. Let's see, what else do we have here today? We other things going on. Uh, clothing, of course, on Wednesdays. Ladies meeting coming up on the 21st. That is this Tuesday, isn't it? Yes. Ladies meeting 21st at 6.30. All ladies of the church are invited to attend. Uh, men often, uh, often meet the same time for a, a dinner and, and a conversation. Ronnie, where are we going to meet this Tuesday? Where are we going to eat this Tuesday? Which one? <laughs> direction is that? Logan. West Logan Giovanni's at 6.30. Okay. Um, where's the other switch? Okay, we've got clothing. We've got clothing. We've got ladies' Bible study. Ladies' Bible study is 10 a.m. on Fridays. That's, that's over, isn't it? Ladies' Bible study is put off until September when it will pick up again, just kind of like Alana. Uh, I think that is it. What did I miss? What are you waving at me? Oh, I'm not to you yet. I know you're you're coming. Okay. Uh, let's make sure. Uh, one, two, three. What? Youth Saturday. Youth Saturday. This Saturday coming up. What time? Six twenty-eight. This Saturday is youth meeting. See that right there? Just right there, black and white on the door. Um, so now we want to take a minute and uh, being graduation Sunday we need to do some graduate presentations so we have one from high school and we have two from college so we'll start off with high school and we'll ask Brenda to come forward and we're going to get over here so the camera can still kind of see us argue about that. So, we've all, I think we've all kind of been through high school for the most part. Well, maybe some of you haven't made it through yet. Hopefully they want to. Uh, we've all been down that path and we kind of know what high school is about and what graduation is about. But so you're, uh, you're essentially moving on. You've had paths chosen for you in the past. Uh, now you get to venture into a world where you're going to make a lot more of your own decisions. So what happens after high school graduation? <coughs> Where are you going? Where are you going to go? Oh, beauty school. Beauty school. All right. Amen. So we thing in particular that we as a church body need to be in prayer for you to uh, move through the path of beauty school and whatever else. Yeah. Patience. No, no. You don't want to cut anybody. Do you? <laughs> no patience. So we have to pray for prayer for patience. So as traditional, we have a Bible. Congratulations. Now we have uh, a 
Tennessee College graduate, Rebecca. Come on down. Many of you know it's a little bit different, different with the Cabal perspective than uh, you've been in the workforce before, and we don't have as many choices as sometimes we think we have. We probably have them, but they're always difficult to make, to move from one place to another. So is there any, tell us about your degree. It's a master's in social work. And does that do anything for you immediately in, in job or future? I mean, it or opens up more opens doors. Opens more opportunities you know, for Yeah. All right. Anything we need to be in prayer for you? Just that I can make it through the next five weeks. Five weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good, good. Yeah. And then we have something for you. Not a Bible Thank this time you. because we think you only got one. Already. Yeah, 100 years ago when I graduated. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> We have one more college graduate, Robin Wolf. Don't you roll your eyes at me, Robin Wolf. A bird told me. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your degree in? Um, mine says an associate's in applied science for business administration. Okay, good. So also oh, potentially okay. opens up things down the road? Yeah. Okay. Think so. And I won't be getting your permission. Oh, <laughs> we'll see. That's half a B. <laughs> so what do you think we need to be in prayer for you? Um, not really for me, but just for my kids. That well, I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> that I was able to keep on to them. And where's Brady? Because I'm going to suffer him one day. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you. lesson is Jesus showed grace to others. Grace means giving someone something good that he or she doesn't deserve. All of us are sinners and deserve death, but God gave us grace through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died on the cross so we could have the good gifts of forgiveness and eternal life we did not deserve. Attention, draw your swords. Matthew 8, 1-4. Attention, draw your swords. Matthew 8, 5 through 13. Attention, draw your swords. Mark 2, 13 through 17.
10 from charter schools. Acts 10, 43. No. Didn't even open the Bible for that one. <laughs> Attention, draw your sword. 1 John 5, 11, and 12. And draw your sword. First Corinthians one, three, and four. one, attention, draw your sword, Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Okay, for our hymn of prayer, we'll sing the number 739, the first and third verses. <laughs> and Robin, a true mother, wants prayer for her kids. So, uh, what else do we have? Prayer and praise. Good to see Pam and John here today. Pray for this country. Pray for this country. We are in trouble. In trouble. Everything else is good in the world? procedure today. Okay. Anybody know what that is? Um, 
<laughs> Anything else you didn't already do it? Kind of thing to grow, Mama. Mama says it's good, right? Uh, we've had a few in the last few weeks uh, messages sent for prayer during the service, and I have been uh, lax in, in commenting those and sending those out. Uh, but uh, just in case we do, we are praying for you folks online and have prayed. Anyone else? Let's go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this beautiful sun time you've given us today. We thank you for this special Sunday in which we come and, and celebrate and recognize our graduates and our teacher of the year, Lord. Uh, we do offer prayers and praises for them as they continue uh, their schooling, Lord, as they move into their career. And we pray for a special focus for Brenna. And we also pray for our Rod and for her kids as they continue through their schooling, Lord. And we know there's plenty of hurdles. All of our kids face hurdles today that we never faced when we were younger, Lord. And we just ask that you be with them, touch their shoulders, touch their hearts, touch their minds, Lord, to, to keep them, to keep the faith, Lord, and to uh, be able to tell others about you. We do ask that you also honor these other prayer requests. We know you've heard them and you've given before we utter them, Lord, but those who are facing procedures as Judy, uh, those who are uh, facing uh, uh, other things going on in their lives, like only sister, Lord. Uh, we pray for our economist relatives that she didn't, she didn't bring that up today, but she has the past few weeks, Lord. We pray for those who are enduring special trials and tribulations this morning, Lord, just every day, problems we face in life. And we, we want to, again, raise our country to you, Lord. We know we are lacking in many ways, and we just ask that you help us to tell others about you, that they can come to the faith, Lord, and inspire our leaders to return to you, Lord, and watch over and keep us and we also ask that you uh, keep the the, uh, the the nation of israel in your hands lord and we know that he wins in the end that you will pull those tears you speak of lord we just ask all this in your name amen uh stand and sing the doc song <laughs> This is a good day. We've got, uh, I like new beginnings. Uh, you know, we have, we, in our life, uh, we go through uh, many new beginnings. Uh, I like to see people graduate. I like to see people that achieve. Uh, it's good to achieve. But that means there's, that means there's hard work. When someone achieves something, we don't know the hours that Rebecca's put in working 40, 50 hours a week plus school. <laughs> you do. Uh, I was watching a, a, a show, uh, well, really not a show, it was a news, news piece on, I um, can't think of his name now. Uh, it was a, you know, you're going through the NBA basketball. And this sportscaster was talking about how this one, God, I wish I could remember his name, how this one particular player trains. He shoots uh, 300 three-point shots every day, Monday through Sunday. He never misses a day. Seth Cur uh, Curry, uh, that sound right? No. Yeah, okay, that was, that's who it was. 300 shots from a three-point range every day. 
just so that he can go out and play a basketball game for a couple hours and make those three-point shots he makes. There's a lot of work that goes into achievement. There's a lot of work that goes into a family. Uh, Adrian Rogers said, the greatest mark of character, though, is the fear of the Lord. That's the greatest thing that we can achieve. And God achieved it for us the day that he sent his son to die on the cross. We just simply need to accept him. We just have to say, Lord, help me. Lord, save me. But all achievement is done through Christ. Graduation is a good time. It's a formal time set aside that we recognize achievement by people. It's a milestone. Uh, I was getting ready to graduate from college at Concord College uh, with a degree in math. I was home for Christmas. And we're sitting there at the table, my brother, myself, and my dad. And dad looked across the table and he said, son, when you graduate, what are you going to do? Well, the truthful answer is I hadn't thought about it. I was enjoying college. I got to college and I had fun. I enjoyed it. And I hadn't thought about what I was going to do. But there's a, there's a point in time when we all have to take what we've learned, we all have to take what our past is, and we have to gear it into a direction that moves forward. And hopefully, it's good. Uh, Dorothy, when I was preparing for this, she, she said, are you, are you studying? Uh, and I said, yeah. And I, she said, what are you going to do? And I said, well, we're going to talk about graduation. And then she made a comment that was kind of interesting, stuck with me, wrote it down. She said, did you know that half my graduating class is dead? Think about that, people. Half of the people that she graduated high school with are no longer with us. So we've got this very short period of time, a very small space of time that God gives us to make a difference in life. A very small space of time. And we need to do that. I hate to see someone going around with doom and gloom on their face, and everybody in here knows people like that. In fact, if you go, in, you go up to the mall, maybe, you go up to Walmart, maybe, and you go down and turn down an aisle, and you see somebody, and you go, ooh, and you turn around and go down the other aisle. Have you ever done that? And if you don't say yes, then, you're, then you need to get up here at the altar. But we all do that. We stay focused, and we can achieve anything with God and the fear of the Lord. We can do it. Three passages of Scripture we're going to look at today. We're going to look at three. My favorite for this time of year, for this time of th something, is, and we're going to go there first, and then we're going to go to two more, is Joshua chapter 1. Then we're going to go to 1 Kings 18. And then we're going to finish out with Romans 8, 28, which all of you know. Go to Joshua chapter 1. We're going to look at two verses. Joshua chapter 1. It says here, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses, assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, and you and all these people, and this is the land that I am going to give to them, to the people of Israel. Let's bow for prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for, the, for your message. We thank you for your, the word that you give us. We thank you for applying it to our lives. But Lord, we, we come to you as humble as we can to be strengthened by your word, to hear your word, and to love your word. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now, it says here, God buries his workmen, but the work goes on. This church, uh, we got into a conversation recently about the church, or the history of this church. I was in one. And what 
what it reminded me of was this church actually started up at Rum Creek. Most of you in here know where Rum Creek is. I, I grew up at DU at the mouth, on up Rum Creek. But there's a little church at the mouth of Rum Creek where this church, where this church got its foundation, where it started. Then it moved to this lot in a trailer on the back of this property. Then the first building got built. Uh, it was just a bare building and a sanctuary. Then it got the classroom addition put on. And then this sanctuary got built. And there's lots of people involved in that. Uh, I didn't know any of the ones involved in, in the... I knew a couple of people that were up at the Rum Creek. Uh, wasn't involved in that at all. But and then there's... As Dorothy and I came to this church, we got, we got involved with people at that time. And many of those have went on. Many of those have passed on. Uh, Clyde and Al King. Mike and Ruth Provino, uh, Joe and Abigail Hager, and, and many others, many others. Uh, God buries his workmen, but his work goes on. It never stands still. Rebecca has a, has a wonderful profession she's chosen. But now she's got this degree, and it goes on. And the purpose of that degree is to help more people. It's to work harder. What does work, hard work get you? More hard work. My uncle told me that when I was about 16 years old, and that is 1,000% true. The, the more hard work you do, the more hard work you get to do. God tells us we are to keep going. Now, many people live in the past. Many people live in the past. I've got one young man that, that uh, I went to high school with here um, that if I go to the grocery store, every now and then I'll go to the grocery store for Dorothy. And if I run into him, he wants to talk about when we played baseball in high school. That's the whole conversation. And I can't even hardly walk away from him. He's a good guy. I love talking to him. But that's all of his conversation. He's never left high school. I ran into a person yesterday. I was at a ball field watching my grandson play ball. Ran into a person there that I, played, I went to Concord College with. That's all he wanted to talk about, how what we did at Concord College. Well, there's some things in life I kind of like to forget about. I don't know about you all, but there's periods of my life that I just soon... Well, let's just don't talk about them that period of time. I'd rather talk about what's going on today. Living in the past, the hardest part of doing anything. And it's real simple. And this, is for the, this message is primarily for the graduates. The hardest part about doing anything in life is getting up out of the chair you're in and going and doing it. That's the hardest part about doing anything. Just getting up. And going and doing it. I'm sure when Dickie started teaching the Bible school, Sunday school class, he, the first few Sundays he taught, he probably thought, how am I going to do this? And right now he's probably studying 10 and 12 and 14 hours for a 40-minute class. And I know he is because that's what I do. To do this message, to do this message, I've got hours in it. But it's good hours. Do you, ever, do you ever work and then find yourself enjoying what you did? Our past life is over, good or bad. I've got good things I've done in my life, and I've got bad things I've done in my life. Good or bad, those days are over. They'll always be over. And I cannot go back and repeat them. I was talking to a gentleman yesterday. He was beating himself up a little bit because of some of the stuff that he did 10 years ago. 
there's not one thing that gentleman can do to change that event 10 years ago. But he can give it to the Lord. And we talked about that yesterday. At this ball game, there's 30 people around us, and we're sitting there having a little prayer, not a prayer session, but a little scripture session. He can change that day. Just like Rebecca and Brenna and Robin have changed their background now. Their, back, their future will not be the same starting today because they've got a new degree. They've got new opportunities. Brenna don't even know what's going to hit her. It's a good time, Brenna. It really is. But you're going to be faced with decisions, and we're going to talk about that here in a minute. You're going to be faced with decisions that you don't even know you're going to be faced with yet. You, don't even, you can't even imagine them. I couldn't. It's like that day Dad said, son, what are you going to do when you graduate? I don't know, Dad. So I go to looking. There's things that we cannot control. 1 John 1, 9 tells us, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It tells us that. We do things in our life that are not good, people. And it eats at us. And it keeps us from doing other things that are good. It keeps us from, it, it holds us back. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to be held back. God does not want us to hold us back. Moses didn't do everything perfect. Joshua doesn't do everything perfect. He had problems in his camp. Moses had problems. Do you think Moses probably, when he was going up on that mountain to die, and never go over to the promised land, he might have been walking. It doesn't tell us in the scripture, but I get the picture sometimes in my head. He's going up on that mountain thinking, man, I wish I hadn't have smacked that rock with my staff. We all have those moments. We all do it. But we have to live for today. Transition can be hard. It can be very hard. God will lead us into unconvenient places and uncomfortable places, but he takes us out of them. He'll do it. It goes on in Joshua to say, the land I have given you, I will prosper you, I am with you, I will give you. Hebrews 4, 9, for if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. It says here, now therefore arise and go over the Jordan. He wasn't going to let the nation of Israel rest. God said, go. And he's saying that today. He's saying, go. He I honestly believe God does not want us to rest. I think when the day that I end up in my assisted living facility and I can't function, I'll rest. But until I hit that day, my feet are going to be moving. And I pray that God allows that to happen. Nancy over there is an inspiration. She was a very sick young lady, sick young lady here recently. But she had the determination and the prayer of this church with her and the prayer of her family with her to give her more days. And she's affecting lives just by sitting right there. She's affecting mine by being there. Let's turn over to 1 Kings. Go to 1 Kings. Uh, 1 Kings 18, 20 and 21, yeah. 1 Kings 18, 20 and 21. Now, there's been three years of drought here. Elijah appears to the king Ahab, and they're going to put two gods to the test. They're going to put the god of Baal and Yahweh to the test. That's what's occurring here. Verse 20, so Ahab sent to all the people of Israel and gathered the prophets together at Mount Carmel. And Elijah came near to all the people and said. Now pay attention to this. He's speaking to the people. Elijah the prophet speaking to the people. How long will you go limping between two different opinions? 
If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people did not answer him a word. That's sad, people. If you're going to follow God, say it. Don't waver. Don't waver. Say it. Stand up and be counted. How long will you go limping between two different opinions? If the Lord is God, follow Him, but if it's Baal, then follow Him. Firm, wise decisions can make the difference between success and failure. Firm, wise decisions. And what are firm, wise decisions? Now, this is something I get excited about. I think a whole lot of people, including myself at some points in life, have sat on the fence. And I forget who talked about sitting on the fence, but all you think you Junior did. What do you get when you sit on the fence? You get splinter. That, and, and Satan owns the fence. That's exactly right. Don't be a fence setter. If it's God, choose God. You will have moments of success. You'll have moments of failure. Failures will be successful. And there's some, there's sometimes a failure will be a success. And sometimes a success will be a failure. It'll happen. That's life. And when Brianna's going through her, what'd you say you're going to do for beauty, beauty, beauty school? There'll be times when you're going to think, man, I wish I didn't do this. You're going to think that. But that's when you have to get up and you have to go. That's when you have to get up and work harder. Don't quit. We have life. I have those moments in my life. What I struggle with now is physical health. I get tired. I sat on that ball field yesterday watching my grandson play for seven hours. And I mean, people, that son was a beaten down hot and I could go on for five minutes how hot it was but I enjoyed every minute of it and after that game he comes up and he says Papa how did I do that to me is more valuable than gold people it is we have moments in time that we want to sit down and do nothing God does not intend us to do nothing. God intends us to go across the River Jordan. Whatever that, whatever that river is in our life, he wants us to cross it. And sometimes that's a person in front of you that needs the Lord. Sometimes. Sometimes that's a person at Lowe's that about three weeks ago that I helped with a buggy. It can be anything. But how do we make decisions? How do we make those decisions? We get the facts. We use discernment. Get the facts. I heard a, I heard a newscast two days ago on climate change. I wrote it down in the Bible. You, know, you, know, you hear about all this climate change stuff? They were talking about CO2 levels, carbon dioxide levels, that we put off. Every time we burn fossil fuels, we put off CO2. Okay. Well, this uh, scientist was asking some questions, and he asked this other guy that was all, this, all hyped up on climate change, and he asked this one scientist and said, how much CO2 is in the atmosphere? And this one guy wouldn't answer him. Well, as soon as that one guy wouldn't answer him, I knew there was something wrong. You know how you just know when somebody's not wanting to tell you the truth? Well, finally, this guy said about 5%. And so this other scientist said, do you know in the last 70 years how much all the climate change regulation has helped us change the, the CO2 levels? He said, no. Well, he knew, he knew the answer to it. He said 0.001%. So in 70 years, with all the stuff we've done for climate change, We've lowered the CO2 levels 0.001%. Now think about that. And if you go on the news today, what do you hear? Climate change. 
I love what the comedian said. In the summer, it gets hotter. And some summers are hotter than other summers. And if, you, and if the truth is, if you get the CO2 level too low, too, I, I like this kind of stuff, so I'm going to share it. If you get the CO2 levels too low, you know what you get? The ice age. If they get down around 2%, you got the ice age again. Discern the facts. It says in Acts 17, Now, these Jews, meaning the Bereans, were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word with the ignorance, explaining the scriptures daily to see if these things are so. To see if these things are so. My son David, he, uh, he went to college at Concord. This was, I don't know how many years ago now, but it's been a while. This comes back. We're sitting at Thanksgiving dinner table. And he starts arguing with me about liberal policy. Now, I know the pulpit is not a place to talk about conservative and liberal stuff. But he starts going in on all this stuff. And I talk back to him a little bit, but not much. And, and I basically in the conversation, I said, David, one day you will change those views. So he's now went through medical school and he's got a job. He's changed his view. He is no longer a liberal. He is a hard-knocked libertarian. You can't even talk to him now. As we learn things, we change. As we learn Scripture, we change. Scripture's meant to change us. Scripture's meant to teach us. And the last is to take courage and act. How long will you go limping between two different opinions? We have to take courage and act, people. We have to step out. And sometimes, and sometimes things don't work out the way we want them to. We're going to go to a verse that we like, Romans 8, 28. Turn over there with me. It's a well-quoted verse. We love that verse. I've heard it quoted many times. All things work together to the good according to the will of God for the good for those who are called according to his purpose. That's a verse of scripture that gets quoted so much. All things, people, don't always work out for the good. And I want to share one with you that occurred about three days ago. There's a boy on Sawyer's ball team. They were practicing, and they were using a pitching machine to throw balls up in the air, come down in the outfield, and catch the ball. I've done that drill myself. This one boy in particular... He had caught about five of those fly balls. But on, one, on this one particular instance, he missed that fly ball. Hit him right here. It knocked his nose all the way to the left side of his face. His nose ended up over here. My son Drew said blood went every direction. So something that was being good all of a sudden turned bad. And it can happen like that. We have those moments. Now, he went to the hospital on an emergency basis. They did emergency surgery. They straightened his nose out, and he's going to be just fine. But everything is not perfect. The Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Daniel 3 and Daniel 3.17. Nebuchadnezzar wanted everybody to bow to the statue. Three of them did not. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego would not do it. And they said, 
If this be so, our God is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace and will deliver us out of your hand. God is able. He's 110% able to deliver us. But are we in that plan that he should deliver us? I don't know. We don't know. We don't know that. Why does life not always turn out so good? Does not always make sense? God's word is always constant, reliable, and true. All things work for good does not equal all things work for good as I expect it to be. There are times in life that we just don't understand. There's going to be times in life that Rebecca, Robin, and Brenna don't understand. There's times in my life now I don't understand. I don't understand why Dorothy had to fall off a ladder a couple years ago and break her back. That changed our life like you all had no idea. I don't understand why 13 years ago I'm having emergency heart surgery because I'm 99% blocked in my LAD. I thank God every day for Dr. Stanton and his team that found that, and I'm still here. I thank God every day, even though I don't show it all the time for Dorothy, that she's still with me. All things do not work good as far as our expected outcomes are. There's times in life we just don't understand. It says in Hebrews 11, many suffered floggings, mockings, chains, imprisonment, stone, uh, sawing in two. There was many people that suffered greatly in the scriptures. Paul ended up being beheaded. James, uh, Peter was hung upside down. Peter was I say James was beheaded. Uh, there's a lot of things in life that we don't understand. But we go through them. And God wants us to keep going through them. He doesn't want us to stop. And he doesn't want us to get depressed. He doesn't want us to get anxious. What he does want us to do is prepare for the, fr for the future and give our Christ a Give our heart to Christ. If we give our heart to God, He can take our successes, He can take our failures, He can take us, He can take this church, He can take my grandsons, your grandsons. He can take us beyond anything that we can imagine and give us a peace beyond anything we can imagine. We can't imagine it because we don't know how good it can be. We only know those little short periods of time that we have happiness. But he can give us that joy that when you're by yourself and you're sitting alone, that you just feel good. That you've got a peace in your heart right here that says, I'm okay. He can give that to you. And the way to have that is to accept him as your Savior. The way to have that is to commit to him today. And if you're here and you want to receive Christ as your Savior, do it. Do it today. We're going to have communion in a minute. And our communion is open. If you're saved, if you made that profession of faith, participate.
And after the service, if you want to come up and talk with me, we'll sit right here or we'll go into a private room, however you want to do it. And we'll talk about your life with Christ. Because if he's drawing your heart now, he wants you. And you've just got to take that step and say, I will, Lord. That's all it takes. Let's bow for prayer. Father God, we thank you for this moment in time. We thank you for the people here. We thank you for the graduates, Lord. We thank you for the life you're going to give them. We thank you for the work that they're going to do for you. But most of all, Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. The deacons come forward. And Again, the communion here is open. If you want to participate, you can. You just need to be saved.